Good morning. Welcome to A Good Word from the Lord. Today is a special edition as we celebrate what has come to be known as Good Friday here before Easter weekend. And so as we have a special emphasis on the cross and a special message today for Good Friday, and I sure wish we could be together as a church family uh, to partake of the Lord's Supper and to just uh, worship the Lord together on this holy uh, weekend as we consider uh, Easter Sunday and what it means to billions of people across the planet. And uh, unfortunately, we find ourselves still here in this uh, uh, video situation. But if you want to look in your Bibles today to Matthew chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, as we consider the cross, and we consider this um, special, special day. Matthew 27, and then we're going to read several verses to get our context here. Uh, but of course, this is the crucifixion of Christ. He's uh, going to the cross. And as we look at uh, verse 27 in chapter 27, it says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. Verse 37, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus the king of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. A very uh, gruesome scene, a, a, a very uh, troubling scene as our Lord and Savior, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ, has now been mocked, beaten, spat upon, uh, had his robe stripped from him, has been uh, marred by the hands of these soldiers. Isaiah said his visage was marred more than any man. And the Bible says that they sat down and watched him there. They sat down and watched him there. The song says this, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. And then verse 3 says, Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there? when they laid him in the tomb. And as they sat there, the Bible says in verse 36, they sat down and they watched him there. And the thought occurred to me, what were they watching? What was that crowd seeing that day? And I want to give you a good word from the Lord today, though we certainly are, are saddened to consider the cross and what had to happen, what must have happened uh, for us to be redeemed. But what did they see there? Well, the first thing they saw, they were watching the greatest man who ever lived, the holy, undefiled, sinless Son of God, the God-man, God the Son and the Son of God, the most powerful uh, uh, speaker, the one who had authority, the one who healed, the one who taught, the one who, who brought the dead back to life again. They were seeing the greatest man who ever lived, the one who had the most perfect wisdom, the most compassionate friend, and when you think of Lazarus and the Canaanite woman and the people who were set, set free from devils and all those who received their dead back to life again and those who were healed of their blindness and of their leprosy, 
They were seeing, they were watching the greatest man that ever lived. They were also watching there on the cross that day, the greatest sacrifice that had ever been offered. All through the Old Testament, there had been sacrifices ongoing, the blood of goats and of rams and, and of doves and, and the greatest sacrifice that all of these things were insufficient for the sins of the people. The blood of animals could never erase the sin of mankind. The Apostle Peter tells us that we were redeemed not with the blood of goats or of rams, uh, but, but we were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. The precious blood of Christ. And what the crowd was seeing that day on the cross on Golgotha's hill, what they were seeing that day was the greatest sacrifice that was ever offered. You see, in the Old Testament, those offerings had to be made over and over and over again. But this offering was made once for all mankind forever, the blood of Jesus Christ that taketh away the sins of the world. They were watching the greatest man that ever lived. They were watching the greatest sacrifice that was ever offered. And then they were watching the greatest gift that was ever given. The greatest gift that was ever given. Though it was a bloody scene, uh, J. Vernon McGee preaches a message says that it was a bloody road to the cross. And it was gruesome. It was grotesque. It was a bloody scene on Calvary's hill. But in the midst of all of that violence, there was a wonderful gift being offered to the people of this world. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that He gave. So by implication, a gift was given, a gift was made. Unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born, the prophet said. And here was that gift that was given the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I've received many gifts over my lifetime for birthdays and Christmas and anniversaries. Uh, some gifts have been very costly. Some have not been as costly in dollars and cents, but they certainly were sacrificial gifts and they made a huge difference in my life. They were very meaningful. Not silver or gold bought our redemption, but the gift of the blood of Christ for you and for me. His own precious blood It was the blood that made the difference. It was the blood that sealed the redemptive act of God. And so the redemption, the blood of Christ that made us sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God because of the cross, because of the blood. They sat down and they watched the greatest gift that was ever given. As I preached on Palm Sunday, they saw the greatest victory that was ever won. When Jesus bowed his head and gave up the ghost, the Bible says, he used these words, it is finished, and the greatest victory was accomplished. Satan was destroyed, the power of hell and death was defeated and broken, and the demands of the law were fully satisfied. You know, sometimes people get confused about this. Yes, we are saved by grace through faith, but God had to have satisfaction for the sins of mankind. There had to be a blood sacrifice. Without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, there is no remission of sins. And so it was more than the act of Christ giving himself. It was the precious blood that atoned for our sins. Had there been no sacrifice, there would be no salvation. Had there been no redemption, there had been no remission of blood, my friend, there would be no redemption of the lost. They saw the greatest victory that was ever won, and then they saw the greatest door that was ever opened. Many times in the Gospels, Jesus gives these I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. And one of those, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter, he shall be saved. I am the door. And here at that crowd outside of Jerusalem, they came to watch. They came to gawk. They came to see uh, the, 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 the blood. They, they came to, to see the vengeance of the people against this one who came to save them. But what they were seeing there was the great door of heaven, the open door of salvation, as Jesus died on that cross, literally with his arms wide open, 
outstretched to the world in a welcoming gesture, in a welcoming way. He was opening the door that whosoever will may come. Whosoever will, let him come, John says in Revelation. Heaven's door was opened at the cross of Calvary. And they were sitting there, many times not knowing what they were seeing. But they were truthfully, my friends, seeing the greatest door that was ever opened. And we'll be in heaven one day if you're saved. You'll be in heaven one day because the door of salvation was opened at Calvary. The door of salvation was opened for whosoever will may come. You were there, the song says. Were you there? It asked the question, but the truth is you were there because when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. He looked far off into eternity far off into the future, and he saw you and he saw me. And he saw a little seven-year-old boy from a broken home, a divorced Catholic family. And he saw the need for that young man to be saved. And that young man is now your pastor today at Bible Baptist Church Savannah. He saw the need of your soul, and he saw the need of your family and your children and your grandchildren. And so he opened the door, and you were there. You were on his mind. You were in his thoughts, and he did it all for you. He did it all for me, the song says. Each drop of blood was shed for even me when the Savior died. He did it all for me. There's another song I want you to hear before we're done, and you know it well. I love it. I've talked about it from the pulpit here at church. It's the song, I call it the doctrine song. It has so much doctrine in this one hymn. It's called One Day, One Day When Heaven Was Filled With His Praises, One Day When Sin Was As Black As Could Be, Jesus Came Forth To Be Born Of A Virgin, Dwelt Amongst Men, My Redeemer, My Example Is He. One Day They Led Him Up Calvary's Mountain, One Day They Nailed Him To Die, on the tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He loved me, dying He saved me, buried He carried my sins far away, rising He justified freely forever. And one day He's coming, O oh, glorious day. One day they left Him alone in the garden. One day He rested from suffering free. Angels came down o'er His tomb, to keep vigil, hope of the hopeless, my Savior is He. One day the grave could conceal Him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then He arose over death He had conquered, now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. And one day the trumpet will sound for His coming. One day the skies with His glories will shine. Wonderful day my beloved one's bringing, Glorious Savior, this Jesus is mine. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. One day, He's coming. Oh, glorious day. Friend, remember, Sunday's coming and Jesus is coming again. Take a few moments on this Good Friday to, re to think about the cross, meditate on what Jesus did, realize his love for you, and realize that the story's not over. Today is a sad day, but Sunday's coming. And I pray that if you do not know Christ as your Savior, if you do not know what this Easter story is all about, the cross, the tomb, maybe you're sitting like one of those in that crowd and you're watching all this going on and you really don't know what's happening. But today, the Bible says you can be saved. Today, you can give your heart to Christ. His blood was shed for you. You were there when they crucified the Lord. You were there. He was thinking of you. If you don't know Christ, I pray you'll trust Him today.
Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this special day, this special broadcast as we consider the cross of Christ our Savior. We consider the blood that was shed for me and for the world. And Lord, we're grateful. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. And Lord, we are saddened that it had to happen this way. But we are extremely blessed and grateful that it did happen this way. We thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the nail-scarred hands. And Lord, we know it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. We look forward to Easter Sunday when up from the grave he arose. And we celebrate and we praise you and we worship you. Lord, to whom all glory belongs in heaven and in earth, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. I hope that you will have a good Easter weekend. I know it's going to be the very different Easter, the first time in American history that churches have not been able to meet to celebrate and worship together. But I hope you'll join us on Sunday at 1015 and at 5 o'clock for our Easter services. God bless you. Have a great day serving the Lord.